So we're going to do a, a little home experiment here. Very simple um, test that we're going to do. And we're going to measure the strength of, um, well, I'm going to use some, some spaghetti, but you can you can obviously improvise uh, and, and put other things in, in place of that. Um, there are many things around the kitchen that you could uh, you could probably ask permission to uh, to have a go with, but spaghetti works um, works very well. The experimental rig then uh, is very simple. I've I've just got a um, uh, a structure made out of of Lego here, so it's just really two supports at the side, um, fixed separation. I'm just using the Lego to keep that um, the same. Uh, you could improvise and use all sorts of different things. Really, all you all you need is this this uh, this top level in here needs to be the same on both both sides both of those supports and you need to keep this distance in here for a batch of tests constant so you could uh, arrange all sorts of things to do that and I'm just going to place uh, this on top of um, just some kitchen um, scales that I've, I've got in here these these happen to be digital um, load capacity of, of maybe five kilograms that, that sort of thing but it can measure down to a um, uh, to a to a few a few grams or tens of grams probably in an error. So um, let's just uh, switch that on and put the rig on top. Um, if you're using other things like pencils or or something like that as your supports, maybe a bit of sellotape just to to hold them in place so that they don't uh, they don't end up uh, moving apart. Um, so I'm just going to uh, zero that um, so that we're not measuring force. Uh, from that, and as I say, I'm testing some uh, some spaghetti, and I'm just going to break off a bit that will span across here. And um, all we're going to do is we're going to use the scales to measure the load, and I'm just going to press down in the centre of that span uh, and gradually increase the load. And you may need a few goes with that just to get. Uh, comfortable with sort of steadily increasing the load and uh, on the scales here uh, I'm looking at that readout and I'm just going to try and note the biggest number the highest load that we see before we eventually get a fracture event and so that was 391 grams I saw before that broke and you can see there are bits of pasta going everywhere um, I'm going to have a bit of a, a clear up job uh, to do later on um, and you can see uh, in here, I've already been testing quite a few uh, few bits to get this set up. The one thing that I would uh, just adapt from here, so let's just put another another test piece in place, is that I found it's quite um, quite helpful to uh, just use my uh, my phone and the camera on uh, there to record um, what's going on in the test. And importantly, just record the uh, uh, the loads uh, in here, so that actually I can review after I've done the test and pull off what the uh, what the maximum load was. Sometimes I find I just I miss it when I'm doing it uh, doing it live. So um, I'm just going to carry on with this and, and break some other bits of pasta. Uh, you can uh, kind of try your own experiment, replicate that. What I'm looking to do is test somewhere between ten and twenty. Um, repeats of what is essentially, um, you know, normally exactly the same, uh, the same stuff. But what I'm probably going to see is that I will see uh, slightly different loads at the fracture point in each case. So that was 335 uh, that I recorded there. And I think, yeah, great. I think that just went in my coffee. Um, so um, I'm going to carry on, um, do 20 or so tests. Um, and then we'll we'll catch up with some analysis on that data. Okay, I've completed my uh, my experiments now. Um, I did 25 fracture tests on um, these strands of of spaghetti, um, and so we're going to move on to to looking at some 
data analysis. So hopefully you've been able to run um, similar experiments yourself. If you weren't able to, don't don't worry. Um, there's a data set that I collected on some linguini that's uh, that's filled in on the on the data sheet. So uh, you can you can just pinch those numbers and and work along with those if you if you want to uh, work through the data analysis. So here are the data that I recorded uh, during the test sequence that that I carried out on on spaghetti. And as I say, I, I took twenty five tests in here, and these are just in the the sequence that the values came out. And all I've done is recorded the um, the reading from the the scales um, uh, in in grams at the fracture point, and you can see that there are well, there's a mix in here of of higher and lower values as a as we work through here. So first thing I want to do actually is just is just to pick up um, these values here and put them in a in a, in a sequenced um, order. So I'm just going to copy uh, these across to another column, and then we'll do a sort, um, and we'll sort them so that they go uh, from uh, the lowest value to the highest value. So these are still, let's just keep track of what we're doing in each of these columns so this is still a load well a loading in quotes it's the uh, it's the mass the effective mass that was was read off the the scales and this is a sorted or, or ranked list in here um so i i guess the next thing we ought to do is just kind of turn this into proper units for uh, for a load um so we need to take uh, the uh, the the grams um, value that we had on there uh, multiply through by uh, g um, 9.81 meters per second squared and remember that those were in grams not kilograms so uh, divide through by a thousand um, and let's uh, copy that through for all the uh, the measurements in there um that's good so we've now got well our lowest load was 3.1 newtons and our highest load was was just over four so um really now what we can think about is the is something to do with the probabilities so we've got this this range of, of values one thing we could do is just take a take an average um uh, of some sort, but we should remember that there are uh, various different averages that we we could take in here. Um, what I'm kind of interested in is is to do with the the probabilities. So, um, if we think about the probability of failure in each of these these cases, then um, it depends where we are in this in this ranked list. The the further uh, towards that strongest test we've got um, uh, in terms of the loads, then a larger proportion of our data set have uh, have, have been failed tests. Um, we normally uh, put on the bottom here one plus the number of total number of tests. And the argument in here is that if I'm at lower loads than my 3.13 newtons that I've recorded as my lowest failure, stress then if i did one more test there's a chance that actually that occurs um, at loads that are lower than my my minimum recorded uh, fracture test and actually similarly at the other end in here there's also a chance if i did one more test that actually i could record a value that was was higher than this one in here um, and so our probabilities instead of just one over the num or oh, sorry um, where we are in the ranked list divided by the the total number in that list uh, we add on one okay and that just makes more sense of, of kind of data outside um, the uh, uh, the region that's defined by our lowest to highest um, and we can just uh, copy that through for the rest of the distribution and of course it will go from um, small values down here uh, where we've only got one of our 25 samples failed out to almost one at the other end in here um, where all 25 have failed but we just think about that one more test it could have gone to a higher load okay um, 
that's the probability of failure. If I wanted the probability of survival, then that, of course, uh, I can get at as well. And really, we've got two outcomes of the, the test. If we apply force to a certain level, either the sample is broken or it doesn't. It either fails or it survives. And so as there's only two outcomes in here, um, the sum of those two probabilities, the, the probability of failure plus the probability of survival, um, has to go to, to one. Uh, in other words, we can get at the probability of survival by saying it's one minus the probability of failure. And we'll just fill in the rest of that data set in here. Uh, and now we can we can uh, we can uh, just look, have a plot um, to look at what that um, what that distribution looks like. So. Uh, Let's insert a chart uh, in here, um, and really, this is the this is the crucial output from our 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 data. Then um, we can uh, maybe trim this axis in here. Um, I know that. Uh, I know that we we didn't really get down to uh, values below. What have I done? I've put that in the maximum. That's in the wrong place. Um, let's bring our data set into a, a, a better range and let's trim that one there. We know we can't get a probability higher than higher than one. So here we've got on the the vertical axis here our probability of failure. Um, and uh, on the bottom here, uh, we've got our uh, our loads. So as we apply loads in this regime, regime in here, we we didn't record any uh, any fractures. Um, here's our first fracture, and as we progressively increase loading, we'd see we run up this curve, and we get a greater and greater chance of of failure until we reach the top here, where we're almost at one. Um, we could kind of uh, plot the the, uh, the the probability of, of survival on here, but obviously that will kind of do do the opposite trend and run uh, and run down this way. And so, importantly, some some things to to think about in here would be um, really what's what's important in this in this spread. We've measured uh, the fracture loads and. Now there are, you know, and we've done it multiple times, so we've got an idea of this distribution. What we're going to pick up in the uh, Q&A session then is, is thinking about, well, what are the key features of this sort of distribution um, in determining how useful a, a material will be? Okay, so we've pretty much reached the end of that uh, lecture and, uh, and, and demonstration. And run through some some analysis there, but there are really just some things to to leave you to think about in uh, in thinking about the, that data set that we we just looked at. So um, you'll find these questions on on the worksheet, but really just to think through them, um, I guess we need to we need to think about well, how should we deal with it? Is it good enough just to think about an average behaviour? If it is. Which average should we should we take? Is it just a an arithmetic mean that's important? Is it a a median or a, or a mode type measurement that we should we should worry about? Um, and you could think about well, if if I for some bizarre reason had to build a, a pasta bridge that would survive um, with ninety percent surety up to some load, what what load do I think I could I could impose on my structure? And still have a 90% chance of survival. And then actually, well, what if I wanted 99.9% .9 survival rate? And of course, for an engineer, not thinking about pasta, but thinking about uh, an aircraft structure or, or railway uh, infrastructure, then actually thinking about those probabilities is quite uh, is quite different. And actually, they would not be happy with thinking about loads where there's only a 90% chance of survival. 
they'd want a much, much better survival rate uh, for their infrastructure because lives depend on it. And so one of the things to, to think about here is, is, well, does that average strength matter at all? Does that average fatigue life matter at all? Or does it matter, but it's only part of the picture and we have to worry about the fact that there's a distribution of uh, of strengths or fatigue lives. And then we can think a little bit more about, well, how does an engineer take that sort of materials information and and develop it to make sure that we generate um, infrastructure that has got a lot of structural integrity, will not fail in service, will not um, cause people to, to have serious injury. Um, we'll talk through some of these, these points, but just have a think about them. We'll talk through them in the uh, Q&A session. So um, looking forward to seeing you uh, live and interacting with you um, a bit later on.